Let's talk about the SQL mode option in MariaDB, which is very powerful when you want to migrate from all your databases to MariaDB. So let me first give you an overview of this process. You start usually with an assessment phase where you kind of uh, plan ahead, right? You kind of make an inventory of, of the things that need to be migrated. Maybe you plan uh, uh, the risks and this kind of stuff. Then you end with a quality assurance phase to make sure that everything is uh, perfect and that you can move to a cutover step where you actually connect your applications to MariaDB. Uh, now, I'm interested in what's in the middle here, in the steps like in the middle, right? So you obviously need to migrate your schema. Then you need to move the data. So it's data migration. And then you will have to also modify maybe application code. Now, if you are using an ORM or something like that, maybe it helps a bit, but let's say you have a reporting system or something like that that's based on SQL queries, then you will have to modify this SQL code. Uh, if you are using maybe store procedures and this kind of stuff, then you will have to also tweak those, right? So there are tools like uh, DBVer that help with uh, mm, schema migration and even data migration. And also in data migration specifically, you have ETL tools, right? Uh, I'm not gonna talk about those right now. I'm more interested in the application migration phase of this uh, process because MariaDB has a couple of interesting features that helps you with this. So let's talk about that, application code migration. And the first feature is the SQL mode, right? This is basically a setting, a variable that you set in MariaDB in a server and you set it to, for example, Oracle. So you say set SQL mode equals Oracle. You run this, and after that, MariaDB understands a subset of this Oracle dialect. Okay, so you have to migrate less things. You have to, uh, you need to worry about every single uh, line of SQL code that you have in your application. Now it's going to understand a little bit of uh, more of Oracle, right? Uh, it helps you a lot. And it's also available for PostgreSQL and um, Microsoft SQL Server. And there is also another one that's for older versions of MySQL that I omitted here. But basically, you activate any of these modes and MariaDB gets closer to understanding these dialects. That's super cool. Let's see it in action. So let's say we go to a terminal, we connect uh, to MariaDB. You can use DBeaver or any other SQL client that's compatible with MariaDB. Most of them are. Um, and then you, let's say you want to run, uh, this is not a query, but more like a create uh, statement. Uh, it's just very easy to understand. So here, this is, this will work in Oracle, all right? And uh, if you run this in MariaDB, you get an error. It says you have an error in your SQL syntax. That's because we are using double quotes to delimit um, database objects, like the name of the table and the name of the uh, columns in this table. MariaDB doesn't recognize that, but we can say, hey, set for this session, only this session, the SQL mode to Oracle. Now you can also set it, set global, and now it's like for all the sessions, the new sessions are gonna understand Oracle. Mm, or you can set it in a parameter or in a line in a configuration file, so permanently. Mm, in this example, I'm setting it just for this session. And now MariaDB is gonna understand a little bit of Oracle, so if I try to, execute this create statement again that, that has the double quotes in the identifiers. It says query okay, it works. So this is very, very powerful. Now you don't need to worry about these cases and it covers many other things, right? So we have, for example, their mark arc too. And yeah, you might say, yeah, sure, but my code is not that simple. All right, yeah, fair enough. So I have another example here. This is still very simple, but this is just, you know, to, to, to make a point and to show you an example of how you can tackle more difficult uh, migration challenges. Here I added byte, which is like a, a parameter that you can add in Oracle, right, to the Oracle uh, types. And uh, this uh, wouldn't work in MariaDB even if you have activated the Oracle SQL mode. Okay, so this one is uh, as of the version that I use uh, to run this example. It's not working. Maybe it will run in the future, but let's say you will encounter these, you know, corner cases. So it didn't work. For that, we have something called MariaDB Max Scale, which is a database proxy. It's like another um, software that you install maybe in a separate machine. It could be even the same machine where a MariaDB server is, but uh, typically it would go to a different machine. Mm, it can be also uh, replicated and all that stuff. I'm not gonna go through all the details of this, but um, basically it's a, it's a, it's something that sits between your, between your applications and the database, and the MariaDB database. 
it could be one server or it could be like a like a um, cluster with many many servers right and by the way this is included with MariaDB enterprise uh you can find uh the license details on github it's a uh, uh, source available right so here i installed it on my machine this is localhost uh you can install it in, in, obviously in the cloud or in your own infrastructure on bare metal or uh, kubernetes whatever um you log in to this uh, UI to configure max scale. Now you can use also the command line or configuration files, even a REST service if you want to integrate with other applications. Uh, but I'm going to use the UI because it's very easy to visualize. It gives us like a, a dashboard with uh, some stats like sessions, connections, and the load on this cluster. It also shows the servers that include um, that are included in this uh, uh, cluster. I have servers one, two, and three, and they have one primary and the two replicas so I can you know ask um, I can uh, create more replicas if I want to handle more read loads uh, then um, I think I configure even a uh, read write splitting um, a NoSQL listener somewhere so I can send NoSQL queries to MariaDB it's pretty cool anyway the important thing is that you can configure max scale and you do it through creating configuration objects. So you click this button and then you can select uh, an object. So for this, we're going to select filter, which is like a filter is like uh, either it takes a query that's going to be uh, sent or a SQL statement that's going to be sent to one of the backend MariaDB servers or all of them. And it modifies before it sends that SQL to the, to the servers. Or the other way around, it takes the results from the from a server and then converts that, transforms these in some way, and then returns it back to the client. In our case, we're gonna call these uh, remove byte because remember we want to get rid of these uh, keyword here. MariaDB it doesn't need this one, so we can just get rid of that. And then we select a module. There are many several modules depending on what you want the filter to do. So we, in this case, we want to use our regular expression to modify the queries. Now, if you uh, scroll down there, you find a field where you can introduce the regular expression that you want to match. In this case, I introduced byte and a parentheses. Now, I'm using a backslash there to escape the parentheses because it's a regular expression. But basically, I'm saying match, byte, and then parentheses. Uh, now, I know this is oversimplistic, but it's just so that you understand what this is doing, right? You should be more careful with exactly what kind of expression you're going to use there. And then you say, hey, replace all the matches with uh, just the parentheses. So this effectively removes the keyword byte, which is precisely what we want to do. Now you save this filter and uh, it's there. It's a configuration object is there, but you need to add it to these clusters. I'm not going to go through the, the details again, but basically you have a service that's like uh, taking a bunch of servers, in this case, servers uh, one, two, and three, and make them look as if it, only, if it was only one server to your applications. So you need to add that filter there so you can click on any of those uh, um, links. And then somewhere you will find the option to add the filter that you just created. So in, the, in, in this example, it's remove byte. So you uh, check that, click that checkbox, add it, everything is ready. And if we go back to the terminal and we try to run the same create a statement that has the byte keyword there that was failing before, this time it works, query okay. So that's very powerful. This is an example of how you can tackle more complicated uh, migration uh, processes. Remember, you have the SQL mode that's um, try to understand a little bit more of either Oracle, PostgreSQL, or Microsoft SQL Server. And now you have also max scale to transform your queries without having to manually uh, migrate all of those. So you can migrate much easier and also quicker. Now, if you want to learn more, I invite you to take a look at this page, join us on Slack, contact me directly. We're happy to talk to you and see how we can help you migrate from legacy databases to a modern open source, truly open source relational database. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one. <music>